The simplest way, in my opinion, to how, when, and why for staggering your fertilizer concentration for your entire collection. What to look for, what to anticipate, how to know when to dial back, if to dial back, courtesy of Robbie Robinson, who emailed me with a few questions, which I will address in this video based on my observations on this current collection and my previous collection of orchids. So let's talk about it. Thank you for being here before we get into it because I have a feeling that this chat is going to be rather lengthy and I will take my time with it. So if you have any questions as the video progresses, please put those into the comments. You can edit and add to the comments if there are more questions and most importantly, if at the end of the video you believe that I have left something out and would like to add to the topic, then please go ahead and do that. I find that I can make a video, put my observations out into the universe, but your observations and experiences add to the discussion and could be of additional help to anyone looking into the comments for further information. If need be, this topic will also factor in a part two, depending on what I see in the comments. Based on a live stream on which Robbie joined me as a guest, let's address the main subject of this video and we can possibly deviate away to some tangents wherever the topic takes us. Higher fertilizer concentration for mature orchids and how to determine and increase the fertilizer concentration appropriately. What my observations have been from my second collection when I was growing orchids in clay pots with organic media combined with my current collection which solely focuses on semi-hydroponics also in the form of self-watering with inorganic media it makes no difference as to your setup even if you have mounted orchids your fertilizer concentration should be adjusted as you see your orchids growing in size I was not aware that there was a standard of 300 parts per million out there as being the maximum, as Robbie mentioned. I don't know if that is the standard for other growers, but it is my maximum by which I go with the highest fertilizer levels, and I've been doing so for the past four years. Now, while I have over 300 orchids ranging from miniature, which in my care would include seedlings, to XXL, there are very many that have a different vigor, and that is the first thing I take into consideration when it comes to fertilizer levels, no matter the size, is vigor. As we know, orchids are very slow growing. While some orchids are faster growing and more vigorous than others, for the most part, orchids are slow. When you get a new orchid in, unless you have seen it elsewhere and know that it is a vigorous orchid, you are on a journey of the unknown when it comes to fertilizing it. The reputation of several orchids precede them, so if we take the slowest in most collections, the slipper orchids, to the fastest based on my collection, the Prostechias, we can determine the fertilizer levels based on vigor. The slower growers need a lot less fertilizer and a lot less often than the vigorous genus out there. So while we can have very large slipper orchids, their metabolism will determine the fertilizer quantity and frequency, same as if we have a smaller Prostechia. However, that one would have multiple new growths per season or even in the right climates be continuous growers. Until I do not know how an orchid performs in my climate, I'm very conservative with the fertilizer concentration. That is where I start with 100 parts per million, no matter the media. My focus being on getting roots to establish or existing roots to not rot out and keeping any salt buildup at a minimum. The frustrating part about this process is it can take up to eight months to see if higher fertilizer is appropriate or even up to a full year if the orchid is still acclimating. So the conservative fertilizer levels protect the orchid from taking a dive in both cases. That is what I attempt to do. I always try to cover the worst case scenario until I see what happens next. Again, no matter the size. We can safely say that 100 parts per million will not hurt any orchid, nor will there be any salt buildup if the flushing regime is maintained. However, an orchid can come straight out of the gate and we may start playing catch up because it has taken us by surprise and woohoo if that were to be the case. But playing catch up with nutrients is easy. Reversing damage because of over fertilizing is harder. So if it were to happen that we were playing catch up, then doubling the PM for those kinds of orchids is absolutely advisable. But 
Keep an eye on the surface of the media at all times, because doubling up may be a tad too much if you see salt buildup occurring. In that case, there are several factors you want to consider before thinking the parts per million are too high and you dial it down. Compare the following. Are your temperatures higher compared to when you were fertilizing at lower levels? Higher temperatures may influence other variables like humidity. Are you still following a flushing regime as you did back when your PPM was less? You see, your fertilizer increase may be absolutely fine, but higher temperatures may result in a drop of humidity around your orchids because of increased airflow, resulting in the surface of the media drying out too fast before the orchid has had a chance to absorb the nutrients. For that reason, there is salt buildup, not because it's too much fertilizer. Now, based on the circumstances, if you cannot increase the humidity, if you need the airflow to keep your orchids cool, then it is advisable to reduce the fertilizer back to the original parts per million levels and I usually will then stick to 100 parts per million as an example to keep things as simple as possible. This way you may not get the full size growth as per the potential of the orchid in question but you will definitely get a proper growth and you will definitely not get root burn the moment new growths hit the media. So that is where my focus is. I can speak of a very dry climate. I sacrifice new roots often because I'm not able to keep up with misting. On some days I have strong warm winds that compounds the dry air. However, the orchids need to stay cool, so some of my roots will not make it into the media, but it will not be because of salt buildup on the surface. I have also dialed down some of my fertilizer levels in the past, because of the conditions or I have increased my flushing to compensate for the dry air. Increasing flushing or increasing humidity in conditions that may make you think that the fertilizer levels were too high may be the first course of action because chances are the environment is causing the surface of the media to dry out too fast, not the high fertilizer levels. Now I hear some voices in my head saying, well, if the environment is too harsh for the amount of fertilizer, then that equates to fertilizer levels being too high. And yes, it's kind of a swings and roundabouts cause and effect. But I want to emphasize that the levels of the fertilizer should match the orchid's vigor and our focus should be to provide the adequate influences so that the orchid can use those fertilizer levels as opposed to us reducing fertilizer and just settling to the fact that the orchid in question cannot be grown to full potential. We should always try to grow the orchid to the best of its potential and if that is not possible after we have tweaked other influencers, only then do we know the limits of our capabilities based on our climate. It is a learning curve that can be ever so frustrating, but it is a learning curve that guarantees the increase of awareness of what is feasible with what we can do in our different circumstances, as opposed to going nuts and getting upset that we're not getting it right. The reverse is true when the temperatures are too cold and humidity increases. I have plenty of experience with that, and while my orchids grow new growths during those conditions, I prefer to have a smaller winter growth with roots as opposed to something that I'm forcing upon the orchid because I know it has more size potential. Observing the orchid's capabilities while fertilizing no matter the conditions teaches us the limitations of our environment and sometimes the orchid will be fine but won't perform as well as the same orchid elsewhere where it has the perfect conditions. So, for example, if I can fertilize orchids that grow new growth during the warmer months of the year at maximum concentration, the same orchid being a continuous grower will not get the same parts per million during the cooler months of the year. Controlled grow spaces have an advantage that continuous growers are not subjected to the PPM concentration having to switch based on conditions, but in that instance, if I had a controlled grow space, I would want to emphasize that the light levels should never drop below 12 hours per day, with light levels consistent, warm temperatures consistent, airflow and humidity in balance, there is no need to change any fertilizer concentration whenever the orchid is in active growth. So I hope you don't think that I'm going off on a tangent, but all these influences need to be taken into consideration when talking about fertilizer increases and possibly seeing salt buildup.
Salt buildup being the fastest and one of the major visuals that we can easily immediately determine, which gives us the indicator that something needs to be adjusted. And yes, sometimes we need to take it down a notch. And instead of doubling the parts per million from 100 to 200, we may need to drop it to 150. Keep the vigor of the orchid in mind, as mentioned previously. If at this point in time you're finding some of what I'm saying useful already, would you please take a moment to hit the like button, share it with anyone you may think could benefit from this video and the information, or maybe you question what I'm saying and want someone else to have a listen to give you some feedback, then sharing the video would be a great option as well. And if you have not subscribed to the channel but would like to follow the coming grow season in southern Spain, it would be awesome to welcome you in the comments. Thank you so, so much. So I'm going to give you an example now of what I would do if I had a continuous grower from seedling all the way to mature, let's say, blooming size. But we're not talking about blooms in this video. So if I have a seedling, a continuous grower, and let's use the example of the Catley Alliance because that's an easy visual, and I have a controlled environment with lights on 12 hours per day, humidity at a steady 75%, with day temperatures at 28 degrees Celsius and night temperatures not lower than 20 degrees Celsius, I will fertilize that seedling at 100 parts per million when in active growth and flush in between fertilizing. When the seedling is not in active growth, it still gets its flush and I'm making reference to these figures no matter the media. As the seedling matures to a juvenile, as I like to label the near blooming size orchids, I increase to 200 parts per million. Once we have had a seedling for a year or two, we can tell when a new growth comes out that just has a different look about it. Suddenly a new growth has a look of more substance. And what do I mean by that? Well, when you have observed your seedling for a couple of years with its cute little new growths over the course of those years, and then another new growth starts and you're like, whoa, that is what I'm talking about. Suddenly a new growth has a bit more oomph to it. And that is when I would double the fertilizer because now the orchid is going to need more to make that new growth grow to size. None of what I'm saying has anything to do with orchid blooms. I just want to make that clear. This is not about fertilizing to get maximum blooms or bigger blooms or bloom two, three times a year, okay? We're just talking about when to increase parts per million and what the signals are or decrease, depending. So the 200 parts per million level can stay for as long as the orchid is a juvenile, for as long as there are no deficiencies showing in older structures. And as long as the next subsequent growth while the orchid is a juvenile, maintain the same size as the first growth that emerged and was like, yo, this one's different. But we have another indicator at this stage when it comes to juveniles. Once we see deficiencies in combination with no salt buildup on the media, that is a great visual indicator that we can up the parts per million even more. We can correct deficiencies on older structures as long as the new growth is not affected. Deficiencies are not an issue and correctable. So another two or maybe three years go by and the same thing will happen again with regards to the new growth, maintaining its size, no big change. They're just bigger than the previous seedling growths. And suddenly there is another new growth coming and what you have been accustomed to seeing from this orchid in the past, this new growth will again make you go, whoa! And that is when you can comfortably up the parts per million once again and go to 300 parts per million. Now, with more structures, with more roots, you may notice your pot drying out quicker because the orchid is maturing. So before, you may have fertilized once a week and everything was fine but suddenly you find your pot dry out faster and you will need to water or fertilize two times per week. This is where the 300 parts per million is my margin that I have been working with for the past four years and why it comes into effect and why it works for me so well. Because prior to giving my orchid any fertilizer, I flush the pot through and then fill the reservoir with another 300 parts per million. And suddenly my orchid gets 600 parts per million per week now that it is growing bigger and bigger structures. So I hope that all makes sense. 
One could say that the mature large orchids can take 600 parts per million one time per week, depending on people's differing lifestyles and when they have time to fertilize the orchids. While I do not do that, as long as there's no salt buildup on the surface of the pot, or worse even, wicking up the structure of the orchid, which can also happen if there is excessive fertilizer in the media, I am not opposed to that kind of a fertilizer regime. It's not my orchid, it's not my climate. It would not work in my climate, and me staggering lower parts per million, but more often, gives the orchid the same amount within the same time frame. But that is an example of a seedling maturing to blooming size. The miniature orchids, even when they increase in size, as in grow more structures, not in size as in height, I never go above 100 parts per million concentration when I fertilize. However, the same principle will apply for miniatures that grow more and more structures. They will also start drying out faster, so the time comes that the pots need flushing, and then, if in active growth, another dose of 100 parts per million of fertilizer goes in, and that could also be the second time during one week, meaning the miniature orchid has had 200 parts per million of fertilizer per week, but divide it into safe levels so as to not harm the roots. Medium-sized orchids in my collection get 160 to 100 parts per million when in active growth after every flush, so I'm not going to repeat, you know, if the pot dries out, etc., then they get double that within a week during active growth. But that is why the levels of 300 parts per million is something I've become accustomed to and is why I like to have a single bucket and why I chose with going 300 parts per million of fertilizer because it's easy to divvy that number up when fertilizing 300 plus orchids based on what their status quo is, whether in active growth or not whether miniature or XXL, the amount of times that I have to then fertilize the orchid per week increases their parts per million. Now, all this hopefully makes sense when we're talking about sympodial orchids, but what about monopodial orchids, XXL size vanders, XXL size phalaenopsis, and other monopodials that... <clears throat> I, like a sesquipedale, for example, <laughs> like a crestwood, tomorrow star. So let's address these orchids. When it comes to orchids that are XXL, higher fertilizer levels than 300 parts per million are recommended. However, again, humidity and temperatures need to match. Burning the roots on bare root orchids, even mounted orchids, is very quickly done. It can take a single application and the water evaporates too quickly, leaving unabsorbed fertilizer behind and the damage is done just after that one mistake. So if you are in a climate or your grow space has the capacity of 75% humidity without airflow that dries out these kinds of orchids too fast, then 500 parts per million and more is definitely nothing to be afraid of. In my climate, that was never an option, even while my vandas were smaller. Now, I do not have those size vandas in my climate anymore. I had reached the limit of my capacity to provide for their needs. Hence, no more XXL vandas in my collection. Lessons learned there, for sure. It was fun while it lasted, but I'm not doing it again because eventually I will come up against the same struggles. So even though lessons were learned, I prefer not to repeat the mistakes and have to say adios to vandas in four years again. That's just not going to happen. I can maybe get a big, nice, controlled indoor grow space with all the levels that I've just previously mentioned and grow nice vandas, but that's not going to happen either. And if it does, whoopee, shopping time. In the meantime, I know my climate, I know what works, I know what doesn't work. I've bitten off more than I can chew in the past, and then I have to draw a line and say, unfortunately, I cannot grow these orchids in my climate, no matter how hard I try, given what I have available to me. But now, I have plans for the fertilizing regime of some orchids that I intend to let grow in size. Because my grow space has its limits for the winter months, I have been dividing many orchids to keep them in the collection and still accommodate them. But as from 2023, some will not be divided again, and as they increase in size, I will be upping my concentration to 400 parts per million. It doesn't sound like much, 
But as I mentioned at the beginning, increasing tentatively is my recommended best practice because the environment won't change. So, will the surface of the media stay salt-free with increased fertilizer? Will the orchid have time to absorb the added quantity by just adding an additional 100 parts per million? It will give me a great point of reference to ensure the ratio of absorption and the size of the orchid will stay on a healthy level. And... I intend to do that with my Phalaenopsis complex hybrids, which after four years have increased in size, and I feel that now is a good time to up the ante when they start their active growth. The same with my Guatemalensis, which, next to my Cilogeny Pandorata, are two XXL orchids. They're not monopodial, but we'll get to my monopodial crestwood. Anyway, after four years, the Guatemalensis and the Pandoratas, they have so many more structures to support, they can cope with an added 400 parts per million. However, if I were to divide them, I would not increase their parts per million. I would stick with 300 parts per million. So it is easy to fall into a routine that works well. Because of the slow growth habit of orchids, we end up doing the same thing for years and years and years and suddenly we see deficiencies. As mentioned, that is a great indicator for Oops, <laughs> my orchid has grown so much over the years, I need to give it more fertilizer. Or if more is not an option because the climate doesn't permit it, then definitely more often. As in, if you were fertilizing one time per week and that may not be enough, your pot is drying out too quickly. When in active growth, those orchids may need to be fertilized two times a week, but at the lower ppm levels. However, you are doubling up because you're doing it twice a week during the active grow phase, of course. Now I'm just going to circle back to my Crestwood XXL monopodial example because not bare root and growing well. When it comes to this orchid, <laughs> even though it is enormous, I am not increasing the fertilizer concentration because it gets 300 parts per million every day. That might be a small concentration for the size of the orchid, but add it all up and 300 parts per million every day during the growth season adds up to 2,100 parts per million a week. Now that makes sense for the size of the orchid. I still get some salt accumulation around the rim of my orchid top, but that is because of my dry climate. And considering just how much fertilizer the orchid gets, it is a minute amount of salt buildup, which can easily be wiped off in areas that are exposed. However, that orchid needs the quantity, has a great root system in the pot, so that salt accumulation, it is a fraction of what could be when thinking 2,100 parts per million per week, broken down into small daily increments. While the salt buildup is not attractive, I can look past it. I can see that my orchid is loving the amount of fertilizer it is getting. Goodness me, I sincerely hope that I made sense. That I could put what goes on in my brain as I deal with my collection and verbalize it to a point that I wasn't talking in circles. You see, I'm also in some form of routine. And I don't even think about what I do when I do it. It just happens. But as mentioned in a video that Robbie also referenced, how to plan ahead, going into year five with this collection and with the intention of not dividing some of my orchids, my fertilizer regime will increase for those while the others will still be at their standard levels. So there will be a lot more TDS reading <laughs> going on when I prepare a bucket. <laughs> One day I'm just going to have to prepare a bucket of 400 parts per million and work around that and do the math. And another day it'll just be 300 parts per million based on what the XXL orchids are doing. However, that's not going to be so complicated. All my Phalaenopsis are going to get 400 parts per million come this season. And they are so big, their reservoirs usually take up a whole bucket on their own anyway. <laughs> But you see, when you come into a routine and then year in, year out because of the slow metabolism of our orchids, suddenly you think, how did that happen? My orchid is so big and that's a good thing. And sometimes we don't realize it because we've just come into this routine and then we see deficiencies and then is when we wake up and say, 
ooh, we got to do something about it and increase fertilizer levels or decrease based on all the signals I mentioned just now. So despite this video being another monologue, I hope that once the video airs that it turns into a dialogue. So please let me know if this has helped out Robbie and everybody else that clicked on the video. I appreciate that you were here. And if it untangled a few loose ends, that would be awesome to get some feedback. Part two could be in the works. I'm open to it. I love this subject. However, if you've made it this far, all I can say is thank you <laughs> so much. <laughs> Your time is appreciated. And well, hey, I get to wish you a wonderful day. But on that one condition, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.